When you think back to producing One Hour Fantasy Girl, which, mm -hmm. forgive me, that was your first mm -hmm. producing credit? Mm -hmm. Okay. To now, you have six and then you have two more or more in the pipeline, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. What, how has your vision of being a producer changed? So mm -hmm. the first one, you know, you had this one set of ideals and beliefs and now all the way to, to this, mm -hmm. these upcoming projects. So um, I think when I, when I got into Hollywood uh, and as a producer, I had been working for three years to get one project off the ground that fell apart within a weekend. Oh, wow. That was, yeah, that was, a, and that happened in 2007. So Edgar and I had been working for Edgar Bravo, the writer-director, it was my business partner at No Restrictions. Uh, he and I had been working for years to try to get these projects off the ground. There were like two or three of them. And we had gotten very far. I mean, we were talking about like, you know, getting into CAA, getting into the studio system, getting meetings with people that could make things happen like very quickly if they got behind you. And um, so we had amassed a good momentum and we had put a large portion of the financing together so when we did One Hour Fantasy Girl, I was not happy. To be quite honest, I wasn't happy because we were starting from a budget on another project of 2.5 million, and now we were going to tens of thousands of dollars. And you know, it's a huge drop off sure. there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and so emotionally, it's, it's very difficult because you want to be where you had the potential, you always knew that you had the potential, it was validated by all these other people that said you were good, took meetings with you based on the script, you know, that kind of stuff. That, those are meaningful things. You go over to 20th Century Fox, you're meeting with the head of, you know, the vice president of production who read your script and wants to take a meeting with you. It's a pretty big deal. Absolutely. And you don't have any agent or representation. That's a big deal. That You feel good about that. So to lose all of that and start from square one, <laughs> um, it was, I was upset. I loved the script. When I read the first draft that he had made, uh, it, 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 it stayed with me for hours. And I knew that that was always where I wanted to go, was to make films that, you know, I, I, that were move, moving to me. I didn't have to sit there and think about it. It was just like it stirred in my head. So that was the motivation to get back to where we were by doing that film. So what I wanted, you know, obviously when I created that movie, I wanted it to launch our career. I wanted it to change everything. The doors were gonna open because now all the relationships that I had been building up for the last three and a half years would see a product of something that I was able to do on a micro budget. And it got critical acclaim and it did really well in sales. I mean, we, had, we were talking to people at Netflix. The head, uh, Ted, uh, I forgot his last name, but the CEO, uh -huh. I mean, this is still when they were smaller and still open, but they hand, I mean, I wrote to him in an email and he handed me off to one of the, yeah, I mean, wow. it, it was, it was serious. It wasn't like, um, you know, and I know all these things, I mean, it's, it's frustrating for filmmakers when they hear that because everybody wants that. But at the same time, um, my idea of producing was to get into the Hollywood studio system and become a big producer and have you know, lots of money. Um, but I didn't realize that in essence what we were doing was we were separating ourselves from that part of the industry. Not that I reject them or think that they're wrong or anything like that. I, I mean, they, it's their business, they can do whatever they want. But today, coming forward six films later, and we have the internet and we have alternative media and you have other methods and ways in which you can reach thousands of people very quickly with little to no overhead, um, that's, that's the sweet spot for me as, a, as an independent film producer. I mean, you have to imagine there are also companies now that exist kind of like ours, not as production companies, but companies out of New York and elsewhere that have a team of people and an overhead and a set budget that actually go out and do the same work that I'm actually doing as a producer, one-on-one -on -one with all of these different people in the alternative media because the, the subject matter speaks directly to that group of people. Whereas in a larger system where you have more overhead, you have more risk, you have a lot of other things, you have to spend millions of dollars to ensure that you're gonna get a delivery on payout 
for your investment and your distributors and all your talent and everything else that's in there. So they are hiring these companies now to go and find these groups of people that exist online in these communities and market the film to them. Um, it's quite interesting. Now, it's not first tier distribution level. Obviously, it's not theatrical and it's not uh, television cable. But these second er secondary areas like social work groups and, and other groups that are dealing with causes and, and, and all of that, they, they would have to cast as wide of a net as possible and spend tens of millions of dollars to possibly reach those people where if you go directly to them today and you have credibility and you, and you create a relationship with the person who's interviewing you, all of a sudden you're opened up to their entire audience. And we're talking like thousands of people. Some of these people on YouTube have two, three, four hundred thousand or more subscribers. They also have Patreon, which, you know, is another and you get email blasts. I mean, we saw when we went out and did with a child's voice, our latest film on human trafficking, we went directly to these individuals and the moment that we did the interview and it was published and the moment that that Patreon went out, we're talking like hundreds of sales wow. within days. On Vimeo. On Vimeo alone. And we haven't even gone to Amazon and done Prime and all of that. So when you're, when you're looking at that and you're seeing the potential plus the reaction, the reactions are instant with these, you know, they're, they're writing comments in the YouTube comments, they're writing them on IMDb, they're writing them on a Vimeo organically, organic growth, organic spread. You go on doing keyword search on Twitter, you know, and you look at how all, none of these people follow you. They don't even follow people that you follow. They heard about it, they shared it, they were moved by it. You receive comments, you receive emails. You hear firsthand testimonies from people. I mean, these are the things that I feel are far more important than trying to, um, get access to the industry and their press machine, which is important, don't get me wrong, sure. but relying solely on that to make your message of your movie and your work get out there. So today, from 10 years ago to now, I'm not saying, you know, this system's wrong, but I'm saying there are other opportunities out there that can fulfill what you want to do that don't have to mean going through the Hollywood media and the Hollywood studio system in order to achieve what you really want to do. So for me, the evolution was one of feeling I had to be a part of that and included in it to be important or successful. And instead, realizing that my work and my commitment to it and the people that it's affecting was the best. That's like the best compliment you could ever get. Uh, you know, when you read stories about people who have gone through some of these hardships, not from a news report, but they're personally telling you that I'm so glad that, that you are doing this. I, I, I've, I'm glad that Hollywood is finally addressing this or someone out there heard us. Um, when you meet the victims and the people that have been affected by uh, a message that you're trying to show of what's going on out there, um, that is the most, I, personally at this stage in my career, that is the most rewarding thing that I have. Um, and obviously I would love to be able to, to reach a larger group of people. I would love to be able to work with people in Hollywood who see what we're doing is important. I've been told by producers who've done big time series, big time television shows, movies, they're like, this is exactly the kind of stuff that we need to be promoting. These are the kinds of stories we need to be telling. We need to educate people on the realities of the world that's going on around us. Um, so that has become now my mission, I guess. It's not a political agenda. It's one of, of the search of your journey through yourself and, the, and what you believe about the world around you. So it's become something bigger. It's become something, I guess you could say, I don't want to freak people out, but it's spiritual in the sense of the human self in your heart, in your mind, uh, trying to find your deeper purpose on this planet while you're still alive. And you have this human family of 7.2 billion people in the world that uh, need help. They need help. They need to, they need honesty. They need art. They need, we need the, 
all the things that we talk about when we need art, we, need, we don't need to destroy art, we need to promote art. And art comes from a truthful place within you. And the more we do that, um, I think the better the world can get. At least I'm trying to do my one part, you know, in this little tiny space in the world that I occupy online and in, in reality. So I guess you could say that's been my evolution in the last 10 years of where I saw myself 10 years ago and where I saw myself today. And quite honestly, if you had told that guy in 2008 that this is where I'd be today, I'd go, nope, <laughs> I don't want that. But the guy that I am today, looking back at, at my, you know, my younger self, I would say, dude, go for it. You have everything to gain from this experience. And wherever the cards fall or the chips may fall, you can walk through it all, learning about yourself, learning about the world around you and affecting people in real and meaningful ways. And I mean, that's just me. That's, that may not be everybody, but I, I, I would say as a filmmaker, if we pride ourselves on telling stories that matter and mean something to people, then maybe we look at how we, how we tell stories, who we tell stories to and for, who do, who, who do we serve, who do we go out there to embrace and partner with to help get this message out, like organizations or communities online that exist, social workers. I mean, it doesn't have to all be social issue stuff, but, it, but, it, but it's a human thing to reach out and connect with others rather than standing back here and sort of being in the industry and loved by the industry and everything else. But really, that's fine. You know, having friends and, you know, connecting with others in the industry and having your peers and your allies, that's great. But really, we're looking at how do we nourish people's minds and hearts? How do we bring out, you know, when you show something that's honest and truthful, how you perceive it, how he perceives it, how the next person does, it's, it's a call to action inside of you. It's up to you what you want to do or what you want to take from it or don't. But the purpose should be to try to impact someone, show somebody something that they haven't seen before, something that you learned in the journey of making this movie about yourself and the world around you. Maybe, maybe we could do that a little bit more and focus on that. And if we really do want to change the world for the better, we could start there, possibly.